Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to talk about using Blender with a laptop. So if you're a laptop user, you may find Blender, especially after Blender 2.8, is a really great experience. But there's some certain things that still just don't work great with a laptop. And today I'm going to look at some of the ways that you can fix that. There's especially one thing that they broke, the vertex, edge, and face mode selection. Blender 2.8, for the most part, was a wonderful upgrade, but the changes there can be a little bit painful. So we're going to look at how you can address those changes. So first, let us jump in, take a look at Blender. We're also going to look at how to enable experimental mode. This is sort of a different thing, but if you want to check out some of the, the latest and greatest and newest and most experimental stuff, it may not be straightforward how to actually do that. So we'll cover that in this video as well. So the first thing we're going to address is a trackpad. Now, to be honest, using Blender on a trackpad is not fun. It, it is a terrible experience, but it can happen to you. It's just one of those things. You may not have an external mouse at some point in time. So I'm going to show you some of the ways to work around those weaknesses. So let us start there. First thing, go into edit, go to preferences, and then go up to input right here. And the first thing you're going to want to do is turn on emulate three mouse buttons. We're going to come here in and out of this menu a couple times. But now that you've got that turned on, what you can now do is use on a Windows trackpad, by the way, on a Mac trackpad, it works a lot better. you got things like pinch to zoom and so on. Windows trackpad, not so much. Windows trackpad, you've got two fingers scrolling which is definitely a nice thing to see. So if you've got two fingers, you can scroll in and out on the trackpad. But now that you've enabled um, the uh, uh, sort of emulate uh, three mouse button version, what you can do is hold down Alt, click down on your trackpad, so left click, and now you can orbit. At the same time, you can hold down Alt and then Shift and then left mouse button and you will pan. And finally, you can do Alt, Control, left mouse button, and you will zoom. So you can now use the Alt, Shift, Alt, Control, and just Alt combinations with a left click, which is also the same as a hold and press on a laptop. And, and you can do all of the navigation stuff that you need to do. The other thing that's really nice is with the release of Blender 2.8, some of these things became less painful because you've also got these tools here. So you can snap your different views here and you can orbit around by holding down the left mouse button and panning around the scene to look at your view here. You also have this guy right here that you can click down on and then zoom in and out using. You also got a tool here for pan and moving. So these on-screen displays that were added in Blender 2.8 make working with a trackpad much more pleasant. But you do have to go over and click to these and handle them. So if you want to do it otherwise, what you're going to want to do is go into, uh, again, into preferences, go to input, and turn on emulate three mouse button. Now, first off, I would highly recommend instead of all of that, get an external mouse. It will make your life so much more pleasant. But that is the functionality you've got here. Then the next one is chances are if you have a laptop, you don't have a number pad or if you, especially if it's a 17 inch, uh, smaller than a 17 inch laptop. So where you really kind of come into is this guy right here. And, and to be honest, this applies to me even at home because my keyboard, uh, I use a stripped down keyboard. I don't have a number pad on anything I use. And this is kind of tricky because in the Blender world, the number pad is really essential. You can use it for jumping around in viewports. So we come here, we'll turn on enable number pad. And what you can now do is like one, you see we're looking at the front, two switches between, oh, sorry, rotates. So it's the same as doing, let's see, two would be the down arrow, I believe it is. Uh, three is right, four is to, to go in the opposite direction. Five is switch between orthotic and perspective. Six is the opposite direction. Seven goes to top, and by the way, control and seven will go to the bottom, control and one will go to the back instead of the front, uh, three and so on. So you've got uh, one, three, five, and seven all jump you through your three major viewpoints. It's something that's really, really valuable. You can kind of emulate the process using these guys up here, so snap between different directions by using this guy. So again, it does alleviate some of the problems, but if you've got it on, you've got, you've got that enable, um, the emulating of the number pad on, You've just changed your home row key from being with the previous selection, and you're losing some features and functionalities to do this, by the way, because one, two, three, and so on all do other stuff. Namely, uh, they collect, they add, they select collection one, two, and three, and so on. So that functionality went away. But what happens? Perhaps the most annoying thing, if you turn um, emulate number pad on, is if you come up here into edit mode. These are controlled by one, two, and three. So this is vertex mode. See right there. Uh, like so, and then we got. Uh, edge mode, like so, and we've got face mode, like so. This used to be uh, control tab one, control tab two, control tab three, but they've actually changed this functionality in Blender 2.8. And the problem is, if you are using a the emulate number pad thing, if you're on a laptop, um, you can't set these anymore, which is really kind of irritating. And I, I switch between... Uh, 
edit, like the vertex uh, edge and face mode is probably the most common task I do. So this is one of those things they broke in Blender 2.8. And if you're using that emulate number pad, there's not a lot you can do about it, but you can rebind them. So what we can do here, and this is not as intuitive as you'd like it to be, but you can go edit and you come on in here and you want to switch instead now to key map right here. And now we're going to locate the specific key map we need. And this is where it gets tricky because what you want to do is so come down here, you go find 3D view right here. And then you want to find mesh, mesh global. And then you're going to notice here one, two, and three. So you go, wait a minute, wait a minute. One, two, and three are set for me. Why isn't this working? Well, that's because you're now actually using a number pad. So when you turn on an emulate number pad, this actually turns your home row key of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're gone. You can't use them anymore. So what you actually do is come in here. So you see here, you've got select mode and you've got the option here for vertex. And the next one here for two will be edge. And then the third one here from number three will be face. Well, what you could do is you click right here and you'll notice now if you press the number pad, see, it actually is saying numpad one. So that's the thing you got to do. So you could come in here and you could remap those three. So now what I could do in edit mode is I can switch between one, two, and three by pressing any one of those keys. You're going to see we switch between them. Now that also lost, you just lost the ability to switch between collections doing that. So you may not want to change those particular numbers, but the thing to keep in mind here, and, and this threw me off a little bit is when you're looking at the key maps, once you've set it to emulate number pad, that is not the number one anymore. It is numpad one. So for example, if I go on back here uh, to input and I turned emulate number pad off, and then I go back here into key maps, and then we find this one and I press the one key, you can see we're back to old school one. So that's why it's broken and no longer works. When you turn emulate number pad on, it actually changes these values. Now at the same time, if you want to make it a little bit more complicated, you can pick any combination of keys. So if you want to do uh, kind of control shift and one, that is an option to use. But then remember what you want to be sure you do. And this is where it's really kind of tricky. Make sure that emulate number pad is configured first, and then you go into the key map. So here you can say, all right, so now what we're doing is setting it to numpad one, and then we can also say control and shift. So you can have control shift numpad one, which is just one on your keyboard if you don't have a number pad and you've got emulation on. So that is an option you've got there. To be honest, I don't use it for quick selecting selections or anything. So I'm perfectly fine with numpad one, numpad two, and numpad three. Just be aware you can map these to whatever you want. Or of course you could set it to F1, F2, F3, or print screen, scroll lock and break or whatever keys work for you. Uh, just do be aware you're gonna be overwriting some existing keys. It, by the way, if you don't like what you just did, when you redo this mapping, so you see here 3D view mesh, is where we just did it and then global at any particular time I can come back here and say okay undo that and it'll restore my key maps back out all right so the final thing we're going to cover today this has got nothing really specifically to do with laptops but let's say you want to play with one of the the sexy new features that have been added for example this is blender 2.91 that we're looking at and there's some cool stuff in here so for example I could go ahead and get rid of this guy and you'll notice now we have this thing here so for example I could hold that down and I can say okay make me a UV sphere and now I can single click we can make primitives. So if I want to make a cube, same thing, single click, cube. So that's a new tool in Blender 2.91. That was not really uh, an experiment. As you can see, I can do it out of the box. But what you do have is there's other new sculpting tools. So I go here, let's go take a look at the sculpting mode. So select our object, let's go over here and we'll go to sculpt mode. And here are my list of uh, things here. So there's there's a number of different tools you could do, but you, there, there's some new ones they added. For example, boundary. Where's boundary? Well, boundary is new in Blender 2.91, but it is not enabled by default. So what you have to do is turn experimental mode on to get access to it. In order to turn experiment mode on, it's a two-step process. So once again, we go back into trusty preferences and we go to interface section right here. Now, this one doesn't seem immediately obvious, but there's a, there's a thing up here called developer extras. And that's the thing you want to turn on. Now, you'll notice the second we turned that one on, experimental just showed up. So now we we got this new bunch of settings that we could do. So if you want to bring in the new hair type, undo um, cycles, debugging, and so on. But the one we want to do in this particular case is turn on tools with missing icons. So that's how you get this experimental tab. You go to interface, developer extras, experimental tab shows up, and there you go. So if you want to turn on or play with these new versions and stuff, um, that's what you get. Now, I'd also suggest if anyone from the Blender team actually heard about this, I would recommend um, making it so that uh, if you're looking at a 2.91 alpha build, you probably want the experimental stuff built in. Now, production build, of course not, but the alpha stuff, people probably want to see this stuff. So now all of a sudden you're going to see, especially if I collapse this back down so we're back to just icons, 
all of the nun stuff shows up. So for example, these are things that are experimental, but they haven't had an icon added as of yet. So now, for example, we have the new boundary tool. We also have multi-res uh, displacement eraser and so on. So if you're looking at something like Blender 2.91, which by the way, as of the time of this video is currently in alpha, and you want to check out some of the new stuff, you may not be able to find it. So what you need to do, once again, go in, edit, preferences, interface, developer extras on, and then the experimental tab will show up, and then you've got to turn your things on. So if you want to check out the new particle system, you do it here. Okay, so that is what we were covering today. So we got how to better use a Blender with a laptop, which personally impacts my life. We looked at how to remap the uh, edit vertices, uh, face and edge toggles, which again, something I use massively. We looked at uh, three button mouse emulation, which is uh, highly recommended against. Get a three button mouse, trust me on that one. And how to get around the number pad stuff. And then finally, how to set up the experimental stuff in Blender. Hopefully from all of those tips, something was useful to one of you. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.